Hi guys, today we will learn how to prepare the loan amortization schedule by using the balloon payment method. We already completed these three methods, okay? If you have not watched it, please watch that videos, link in the description below, okay? So for this method, let's get started. All right, so in this set, before I start to go ahead to do anything, let me tell you one thing here about this method. Under this method, the total payment that is this one will be greater than this one, but less than this one required total payment. Okay. All right. So now let's, you know, provide the, you know, random data for these parameters. Okay. So click here and I'm going to put the value $75,000 for this, you know, parameters. And for number year, number of years, I'm going to put the three years. And for annual rate of return, I'm going to put the 10%. All right. Now for compounding method, number of periods and periodic interest rate. We already know that how to calculate it. Okay. If you don't know, then please watch the first video of loan amortization schedule. That is how to prepare the loan amortization schedule by using the reducing balance method. Okay. All right. Now let's, you know, calculate the required total payment okay and it can be simply calculated by using the pmt function in excel okay so press the equal to sign tap the pmt now press the tab and now let's provide the information based on this argument so for rate select this one okay comma for number of period that is that is this one comma for present value this one but you know put the minus sign first and then this one because we will you know get the value in positive form all right comma for future value we want to you know amortize this you know loan that is we want to you know make this you know loan zero so put the value zero comma for type let's you know choose any number from this list because these two you know numbers or parameters will not affect this you know condition because we are calculating the payment amount for lump sum amount okay not for installment or entity okay so you can skip it or you can you know put any number so i'm going to put the zero all right now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key all right now here we have actual total payment in this you know sale we will put the value manually but you know less than this one because i have already told you earlier that is under this method the total payment that is this one is you know less than this one but greater than the interest amount all right so for this we will you know put the manually value but let's you know make this sale conditional by using the data validation okay so for this click here and you know click on the data tab i'm already in the data tab and choose the data validation by clicking on it okay and now click on this arrow and choose the decimal okay and click on this arrow and choose less than all right and now click here and select the sale this one okay all right and now click on the error a lot and now click here and let's you know provide the title warning okay and now click here and now let's you know write the error message so so the error message could be the actual actual total payment must be less than required total payment under this method okay you can see i have written the error message that is this one must be less than this one okay and now click on okay and uh, let's you know check the condition by putting some values here for example i am going to put the value greater than this one okay so suppose I'm going to put the value 3000 and now press the enter key. You can see the warning message is showing that is the, the actual that is this one. The actual total payment must be less than required total payment under this method. That means our data validation is properly working. Okay. Now click on the cancel button and uh, let's you know put the value less than this one. So I'm going to put the value 2000 here. You can see. All right. Our you know data validation message is not you know showing right now because this amount is less than this one all right okay now let's calculate the future value 
and it can be calculated by simply adding the interest amount on you know present value so for this click this one plus this one and now press the enter key all right now for total interest we will calculate after completing this table okay because th this can be done after you know calculating the interest column of this table okay so for now let's skip it and move on to this table okay so click here and uh, for period for let's put the value zero and now click here and let's provide the present value by linking the cell reference okay so press the equal to sign and now click this one and now let's fix this cell by pressing the f4 key and now press the enter key all right now click here and now let's put the value one that is the period one and now select these two cell and drag down from period one to 1095 because we have used three years but when we will you know convert this year into daily it uh, will become 1095 okay so drag down up to 1095 okay all right you can see now scroll up and now click here for beginning balance and it can be calculated by simply linking the cell reference from this you know ending balance okay so press the equal to sign and now click here and now press the enter key and now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now for pmt it can be you know calculated by using the conditional formula and it can be done by using the if e function in excel okay so for this let's you know press the equal to sign and uh, let's you know make the multiple if condition because this you know column required a multiple condition all right so for this let's you know make this condition so press the equal to sign and tap the if e function and here we will you know use the two if a statement to make the multiple condition here so let's make the first condition if this equals to this one and now let's fix this cell by pressing the f4 key then what will happen yes our ending balance that is remaining outstanding amount and the interest amount will be paid okay at this period okay so so add this one so click here plus interest sale okay that is this one and uh, you know we cannot you know get the you know sale reference by clicking on this sale because uh, the sale reference is hidden due to the long formula okay so for this first you know click here and uh, press the up arrow from your keyboard and move from here to here okay so let this one okay all right we got this sale okay and now press the comma and now let's make the another e conditions so the type the e function and press the tab and now let's make the another condition if this will less than this one now let's fix this cell by pressing the f4 key then what will happen yes then simply we will you know pay the actual payment okay so click this one otherwise what will happen zero and now press the close parenthesis now again press the close parenthesis to close the both if statement and before pressing the enter key let's you know fix this you know sale reference that is this one by pressing the f4 key okay and now press the enter key all right now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right we can see all right now for interest it can be calculated by simply you know multiplying the periodic interest rate to the beginning balance okay so press the equal to sign and now click this one times this one and now let's fix this cell by pressing the f4 key and now press the enter key and now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now for principal amount it can be calculated by simply subtracting the interest amount from the total payment okay so press the equal to sign and now click this one minus this one and now press the enter key now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now for ending balance it can be calculated by simply subtracting the principal amount from the beginning balance okay so let's press the equal to sign and now click this one minus this one and now press the enter key now click here and put the pointer here and double click on this corner to drag down the value okay all right now scroll down and let's see at this period that is uh, at the 36th period we can see our loan is fully amortized that is loan amount is zero and you can see at this period we will you know pay all the you know remaining outstanding amount plus this amount that is in total this amount okay all right now let's you know hide this unnecessary periods data by using the conditional formatting okay so for this first scroll up and now click here and select the you know range from here to here 
and now press control shift button from your keyboard and now press the down arrow okay from your keyboard to select the entire table and now I scroll up and now click on the home tab and click on the conditional formatting arrow and click on new rule and now choose this one and now click here and now let's provide the cell reference so press the equal to sign first and then we will you know use this cell reference so for this we will type the cell reference manually so for this first put the dollar sign first and the column name that is z the cell is this one that is row number is 5 okay that means we will you know check the condition from this row to up to 1095 and from this column to this one so that means if this cell will greater than this one then what will be effect in the table yes our unnecessary data will be hidden so for this click on the format tab and choose font tab and now click on this arrow to select the color and choose white background and now click on ok and now again click on ok and now click here and scroll down and we can see our unnecessary data from the 36 period all are successfully hidden okay now for total interest so click here and it can be calculated by using the summary function that is by adding the interest column okay, from period 1 to the specific number of period that is this one okay so click here and now press the equal to sign and now type the sum if function now press the tab and now let's provide the information based on this argument so for range first we will you know select the period that is from here to 1095 so for this select this one and now press ctrl shift button from your keyboard and now press the down arrow from your keyboard to select the entire period column okay and now let's fix this you know column by pressing the f4 key comma for criteria let's make the criteria that we, that is we will you know add only the interest amount from period 1 to 36 not entire period so for this the open quotation mark and uh, press the less than or equal to sign from your keyboard and now press the close quotation mark and now add the and percentage and select this range okay and let's fix this you know sale by pressing the fo key comma what will happen yes we will add the interest amount so for this click here and now press ctrl shift button from your keyboard and now press the down arrow from your keyboard to select the entire you know interest column all right and now let's you know fix this column by pressing the fo key and now press the close parenthesis and now press the enter key all right you can see we got fourteen thousand five hundred fifty dollar as an interest amount okay now if you want to check the total interest whether they equal to the stable or not so for this first you know select this one and now select the range from here to here and you can see this value is exactly equal to this one okay that means our interest column is correct similarly if you want to check the future value we can you know add this column from period one to here you can see this one and this one all right and uh, similarly similarly if you want to check the principal amount we can add this from period one to here and you can see all right so that means our amortization schedule is correct and you can also see that our payment amount is less than this one while this is greater than our interest one so that the statement is written this one okay that means the total payment is greater than interest but less than required payment okay all right so guys we are done we learned how to prepare the loan amortization schedule by using this method okay that's all for now if you have any query regarding this video please ask me in the comment box below and if you find it useful please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel see you in the next method of loan amortization schedule in the next video signing off